Alrighty guys, good morning to you. We are live on this bright, sunny Friday morning. It is 1044 a.m. on the 15th day. I guess it's the 15th day. Yeah, 15th day of November 2019. Can you believe it? We're in the middle of November. What's up with that? So come join me just for a few minutes. Um, we're going to kind of step away from our study that we've been doing on the Old Testament tabernacle and the Old Testament um, um, royal garments. We may get back to that, but um, I have something that was on my heart today I'd like to share with you. So um, we're just going to, let, of course, let the Lord lead um, and share with you what God's put on my heart today. Not very long, but um, it's funny because... Uh, how things work um about a week or so ago dusty and i was um having a late um lunch early dinner however you want to describe it and um after our dinner i dipped into our fortune cookies and cracked open my fortune cookie which i don't take no stock in but i do enjoy reading them and i come across this um this quote unquote fortune but it's more was just of a proverb than it was anything else and and i've got it in my hand because i thought this was interesting um but it said the axe axe the axe soon forgets but the tree always remembers and i read that and i thought well that's interesting and and put it in my little bag where i put my papers and stuff that i want to remember and um, to go back my little notes and stuff and um, I've dwelt on that for a week or better I'm thinking about that proverb um, don't know much about it um, the more I research it and Google and all that it's actually my understanding a African proverb um, it is said to be a Zimbabwean um, proverb um, from the Shona tribe if I'm pronouncing that right and in a nutshell basically what this proverb was saying um, meaning was a person who harms another or borrows from someone will often forget but the person who is harmed or the person who is borrowed from will always remember and that's pretty much what I didn't think about the borrowing part but pretty much what I was thinking was you know somebody who's been harmed um, somebody who's actually doing the harming, they they may tend to forget. Somebody who uses harsh words towards somebody, they may forget. But the person that they've attacked, the person that they've you know um, wounded, if you will, with their words, they they tend to remember a lot longer. Um, and this morning, my devotion is just this: um, remember to be kind to people. Um, Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says um, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof death and life are in the power of the tongue in short you know it's saying be kind to one another always speak the truth listen I'm not telling you that you know don't speak the truth don't stand your ground I'm not telling you that because you know as Christians we have an obligation to you know have a spiritual backbone and stand upon the Word of God but look in first Peter chapter 3 verse 15 and this is the way as Christians you and I need to um, talk to people it says but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts in other words, set everything else away, sanctify, which means set apart God in your heart. Everything else can play second fiddle, if you will. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. But then it goes on to say, but with meekness and fear. And fear just means... Um, uh, well, being respectful, reverence. You know, when the Bible tells us to fear God, it doesn't mean to be afraid of God and run and hide from God. It says to have 
fear of God means to have respect, have reverence. And it's in this scripture in verse um, or chapter three, verse fifteen of First Peter, it tells us that you know be ready when anybody asks you the reason for your hope, you know that's in you. Be ready to give them an answer, but do it in meekness and in respect, in love, in kindness. You know, our words that we use mm -hmm. in Proverbs 18, 21 says there's death and there's life in the power of the tongue, in the words that we use. So let me encourage you today, you know, to think twice before you speak to somebody in a certain tone. Sometimes, you know, we get angry and we get frustrated and we speak at, you know, towards people out of frustration, or out of anger, and then we go back and we apologize or sometimes we don't even apologize and we forget about it. That's why this proverb that we're looking at, this African proverb says the ax soon forgets, but the tree always remembers. You know, the person that is doing the harm they may forget about it oh don't worry about it i was just in a bad mood listen that is not an excuse and that is not a reason to treat people um in a in a foul way just because you're having a bad day a lot of people tells me oh brother dave you never have a bad day yeah i do but i just don't take it out on people or i try not to take it out on people you know, because just because I'm having a bad day doesn't mean, you know, that I have to unleash on everybody. Usually when I'm having a bad day, I just don't speak. I just don't talk with people. I just kind of keep to myself. I talk if I have to talk, but I try not to, um, you know, I just stay to myself unless I absolutely have to communicate. But that's how I handle my bad days. But when I do talk with people, I don't bite their heads off. I don't, I'm not rude to them. I don't use words toward them that I'd regret later on. There's no need in it. There's no call for it. And people that does that, stop it. Stop it. Because, listen, that's not, if you're a Christian, that's not very Christ-like. And then to use the flimsy excuse, oh, well, I'm just having a bad day. You know, and I hear that all the time. You know, people treating me bad and this, and then somebody will come to their defense. Well, maybe they're just having a bad day. <clears throat> doesn't make no difference if you're having a bad day or not. Bite your tongue and don't be rude to people. Don't, don't harm them. Don't wound them with your words. Because even if you go back and apologize, and even if that person forgives you, that wound is still there. That injury is still there. And we're all guilty of it. Trust me, we are all guilty of it. Um, look in James chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. You know, and it talks to us, you know, about, you know, man can control when tame beasts and wild animals, but that little member, that little tongue, no man can tame. But I want you to understand that we can't, but God can. We can be holy and we can call out on Him. And, and ask him, you know, to help us control what we say. You know, um, I was studying this, you know, looking at different devotions and different people's um, comments on the matter. And there's a lot more that we can cover, but we're not going to. But, you know, somebody had said, well, what I do, you know, before I jump into a conversation, you know, is it truth? Is it nice? Is it necessary? You know, and listen, like I said, I'm not trying to tell you that you don't stand your ground. I'm not saying that you don't speak the truth. I'm not saying that you don't, you know, defend yourself with your words because you need to. But what I'm saying is we need to pray and ask God's guidance before we do. And when we do speak our mind, when we do speak the truth, let's do it in meekness and respect. Meekness and, and um, reverence. To one another we don't have to tear each other down um, by our words and our actions you know um, we can put all kinds of topics on here you know um, people's words you know can tear you down spiritually people's words can tear you down mentally people's words can tear you down physically no the words your physical words may not harm somebody but if you spread a lie and and that lie goes to the wrong, you know, go to a, a person, they may come and, you know, cause bodily harm to somebody. And it was your words that did that. When you think, go to court, you know, it's the judge or the jury and it's their words, you know, of guilty or not guilty that determines what happens to you, you know, when you're um, accused of a, a crime. So, you know, your words, there's death and life, as Proverbs 18 tells us, in our words. And we need to be careful.
same way with our actions. I was over at Walmart some time ago, and of course that place is always crazy. And um, I just and I observe people. I am. I'm a people watcher, and and I was I observed an incident. This lady, she had her kid on the side of the cart, and she was pushing the cart, and she come around the corner, and she banged her cart into another person. And they kind of bumped into each other. And that woman said, oh, I'm so sorry. She said, I didn't see you around there. I apologize. And the person said, no problem. You know, I apologize. And they went on their way. And it wasn't just a few seconds after that that the woman left her cart and she was looking at something on the shelf. And the little kid grabbed the hold of the cart and pushed it. And she put the little girl pushed the cart into her mom's leg. The same lady that just looked at a stranger and said, oh, I apologize, was the same lady that turned around and she yelled at her kids, get away from that cart, and, and just, I mean, tore that kid into pieces with her words. And I can't help but to think, you know, how sad is that, you know, that we are kind to strangers, but then our words we tear our loved ones apart with. And, you know, of course, I don't think the mother apologized to the girl. And then I know there's people out there, you should never apologize to your children. Well, thank God I'm not your child because, yes, you should. We should love our children. And, yes, we should be bold and we should be firm and, and set rules. And, you know, but you need to respect your children just the way you, you expect your children to respect you. If you don't like that, you know, that's tough. That's just the way it is. Um, God didn't tell us to um, mistreat our children and using words and yelling and scolding children constantly without love behind it um well that's not godly you know ouch amen whatever you want to say um but let's be careful today and and every day especially close to the holidays you know we get frustrated and aggravated and trying to get everything done you know let us use our words to uplift each other not tear each other down and, you know, that, that's my encouragement for you today. And I'm guilty. And like I said, every single one of us is guilty of it in one time or another. And, you know, this is why we need to pray and ask God for his grace and his strength and his mercy. Because we're all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. You know, and get after the kids, you know, not listening after you tell them a hundred million times, you know, to do something. You know, we, we're all that way. But let us try harder. You know, we can be firm. And, you know, we can set out discipline but let us just be careful of the way we use our words because sometimes I would much rather get physically spanked when I was a child by my parents or you know my babysitters or whatever than the words you know and um, or it's hurt and um, we hear that old saying sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt you that's not true seems like sticks and stones will break your bones but they heal but the wounds of the words stays fresh in your heart it seems like and and we need to be careful with that um an old saying that says keep your words soft and sweet because you may have to eat them later on um i think that's a good adage to live by um so today um let's just be kind to each other let our words edify and encourage each other and not tear each other down so listen, that's all I got for you for this Friday. You guys have a fantastic weekend, Lord willing. We will be back on Monday with another devotion. Um, we've been missing our singing for the last few weekends um, on Saturday. So if we're able tomorrow um, evening, me and Dusty will try to get on there and sing a few ditties for you. So listen, guys, have a blessed weekend. We'll see you Monday, if not um, sooner. So. You guys have a great day. God bless you.